Hello boys and girls, welcome back to my beautiful plot here in sunny Nottingham. Um, it's March the 15th and I'm sure I'm not the only one at this time of year that's feeling like, what's going on? Am I behind? Am I ahead? I think I'm behind, but that's because I've been a little bit unwell um, and the weather's been absolutely crud this year, hasn't it? It's just been non-stop, storm after storm, after rain, after flood, after everything. It's been uh, not the most pleasant of starts, however I'm sure it'll clear up soon. Um, I'm currently uh, recovering from... Uh, bit of a, a cold flu chest infection type of thing so if there's a bit of a change in my voice that's it um, I don't think it's the dreaded uh, coronavirus 111 that I dialed up anyway didn't so that's a good thing um, so yeah I'm just uh, struggling this one out at the minute a bit short on breath a bit chesty a bit coffee but uh, it is what it is isn't it I'm down here I'm gonna try and get into my shed uh, do a bit of seed sowing because like I say I feel like I'm a little bit behind on things uh, I want to try and get these greenhouses filled up. There's still a big risk of frost at the minute, mid-March here in Nottingham. So April, probably another two months, eight, ten weeks maybe, uh, of potential frosts uh, here. So I can't be putting anything tender out or anything like that. Obviously the ground's really, really cold still. So if I try putting tatties straight out in the ground at the minute, they're either just going to sit there dormant or, you know, try and grow, poke their heads up and get frosted off. So I'm just leaving my spuds for now. I know a lot of you guys have got, like, you know, your rules on when you put your potatoes in. But for me, rather than rush it and get, a, you know, them knocked back by frost, I'll, uh, I'll take my time and put my spuds in uh, a little bit later, probably in uh, April, something like that. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm waffling. I need to get some work done, I think. Uh, there's plenty of tidying up out here to do. The uh, weeds are starting to wake up a little bit. Cooch, heads, uh, cooch grass is starting to poke its head up again. So it's just a case of keeping on top of things with the old hoe. Um, yeah, and that'll uh, hopefully uh, you know, kill the weeds before they can get stuck in. Uh, this is my main bed here that I had all of my squashes in as well. I've got some, I think they're hollyhocks. That I put out left over from last year. So if I'm slightly out of breath and a bit croaky again, it's because uh, I'm suffering. Uh, that was a potato bed that's been dug over and left. This flower bed here, the lupins are taking over, but I really don't mind that because I do love a lupin. Um, absolutely amazing flowers. So you can see there from the initial bush that I put in, uh, they've obviously self-seeded and gone crazy. I have put a couple of lupin seeds in my uh, greenhouse there as well. Um, and then over here as well, I had my beans, uh, runner beans in here last year and there's a couple of globe artichokes that uh, keep coming up and another lupin which is self-seeded in there uh, and then the asparagus bed as well, this one's a bit of a, uh, a mixed bag in here I've got the thicker stems which are the uh, crowns that I bought from Wilco's a few years back and then these little spindly ones which I actually grew from seed um, and the, the seed ones, although they're smaller, they do seem like slightly more vigorous to say these plants have been in for, what, three, four years now. And these ones have only on the first year. You know, I'm going to keep a close eye on them because I do feel like the ones from seed are going to be much better asparagus plants. Okay. This was my garlic bed last year. Um, trying to think what I had in there as well. Sunflowers. Uh, there's obviously one garlic there that I missed from uh, picking last year. Uh, what did I have here? I had a mixture, didn't I? I had my carrots, my peas. Um, and some little French beans in there. So yeah, that's uh, that's just the rest of my beds there. They're not in the tidiest of states at the minute, but uh, certainly won't take long once I do get stuck in. A little thyme bush in the middle there. Decided to put herbs in the middle of my bed for some reason. Don't ask me why. And this little patch of lavender here, surrounded by cooch grass. You see there's all the tell telltale uh, little blades of grass coming up everywhere. That's cooch. So yeah, it's outside. Um, it's been held back a bit this year. I know I think this time last year I was much further ahead. All my beds were dug over. I had a lot of plants put out. Um, I have got my garlic out here. I don't know if I remember putting this out on a video actually. But um, yeah, a lot of the garlic went straight out into this bed here. So that'll be able to grow away now. The garlic does need a frost. Um, if it doesn't get that frost or that cold spell um, on the bulb, it'll just grow as one big solid bulb and not break up into cloves. So. You know, it's important to get that out nice and early. A lot of you will have planted it last autumn, but I did not. So that's that. I've got uh, these ones over in the corner here. We had a bit of wind recently, and these boards here decided to land on top of these garlic. So they've uh, squished them over. Um, so hopefully they'll recover. Uh, we'll have to see if they do. It's not the end of the world. It's only two garlics. Garlics. Garlic bulbs. Oh dear. So yeah, I'm feeling a bit rough actually, I'll be honest with you. So, I try and keep it light-hearted, if I can. I'll show you in my greenhouse. Do you want to have a look in my greenhouse? Oh, excitement. Do-do-do. Do-do-do. Oh, 
Oh! Um, sorry, that was all a bit weird. Surreal greenhouse. So, I've got my uh, Stuttgart's onion sets that I put in here. They're all starting to sprout up. My red barren onions, always struggle with red onions, but these ones seem to be sprouting up a little bit. I don't know if you can see those. These will only stay in here until they're not much bigger than, uh, than this one here. I'll say that one's not far off. So a couple more weeks and then we'll get those outside. Other than that I've sowed some uh, little French dwarfy marigolds, so I don't think that'll focus on there. Focus on there. There we go. That's that one and they have just about started to sprout up as well now. Which is absolutely lovely. I've put in a load more dahlias as well, probably more dahlias than I'm ever going to need. Uh, some more lavender as well there because I want to see uh, if I can grow some more. These are more dahlias as well, again nothing uh, popping up on these. And then the lupins that I mentioned as well, I've got two types here. I don't know if that will come out very well. But as you can see we have a little bit of life in amongst the lupins. And then finally the mesambryanthemums which uh, I grew last year and were absolutely wonderful. They gave me colour over several months. So uh, there's a little firework, little explosions of colour there, absolutely lovely. Over on this side I've got the rest of the garlic, I wasn't too impressed with these when they were growing before. If you have a look, a young garlic should never look twisted. You see how the leaves are all like misshapen and twisted and everything like that. I feel, because these are both virgin bulbs for me, I bought these from Wilco's. I've got the Germador and I've got the Casablanca. I'm just not very happy about sticking them out. Um, I might get rid of these. Just purely, purely because they don't look well. You know what I mean? And I don't really want to put them into my soil if there's going to be a problem. You might look at those and think they look absolutely fine but there's something not right there. And then two types of broad beans. Again a lot of you might have broad beans outside already but I have not. Uh, I've just put these out. I've got the Aquadulce and the Bunyards exhibition there so they're starting to grow away. And then my Musselburgh oh, my oak, Musselburgh leeks, excuse me have just about started to germinate. If anybody can spot one in amongst there, then you win 10 points. Yep, well done. So my little greenhouse that got uh, smashed up in storm, I can't remember his name, storm shenanigans or whatever. Uh, I've taken the remaining bits of glass off there, tied it up, moved all the broken bits. I'm just deciding what to do there. So my two blueberry bushes are just sitting in there at the minute. So uh, yeah, that is that. I've still got in my brassica cage back there, I've still got old kale plants. I've not done any picking in a couple of months because they're looking a bit ropey. I'm sure they'll be fine to eat, but I've not fancied it. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's the outside situation at the minute, anyway. Um, so it's not looking too bad. This time of year always makes your, you know, your allotment look a bit worse than it actually is. You know, the miserable weather, you know, everything's a bit looking a bit drab and everything. Not until it really fires into life that uh, you start to get a real good feeling for it. <laughs> Ah oh dear, that's the most talking I've done in a long time. Alright, I've been shopping again. Black currants, I bought these from Morrison's here, about two quid. About two quid, it was two quid. Don't look like much at the minute, just a twig. But you know, that's because they're sitting dormant at the minute. Hopefully these guys will get away, they tolerate most soil types. So I'm going to get them in this bed here that I uh, filled with compost the other week. Um, they grow to about a metre tall, spread about a metre wide, so I'm probably going to overplant them a little bit because I'm going one, two, three down this two and a half metre bed here. Um, I can keep them trimmed, so you know, keep them under control that way. So hopefully everything will be all right. I'm just going to put a bit of blood, fish, and bone down though. That's this stuff here, horrible, dusty affair. Um, just acts as a general fertiliser. So I'm just going to mix a bit of that in where I'm going to plant them to help get them away. So it doesn't look like much at the minute does it? There we go, could be simpler. 
And there we go, there's three of them planted up. Hopefully we'll be enjoying some of them tart little berries in the summertime. Lovely. Now one of the crops that's always done me blooming odd. <laughs> now one of the crops that's always done really well on this plot is me parsnips. Now these guys have died down over the winter and they're starting to sprout back up again. Being biennials you want to now get them out because they're going to start using all the goodness out of that root. This foliage here can be nasty stuff as well, the sap on it. If you get it on your skin it gets photo activated by the sunlight, causes a really nasty blister. So make sure you've got your gloves on. Um, and we're going to whip the rest of these out now because it's that time of year and if I have to take them home, freeze them, blanch them, do whatever I have to do, turn them into batches of soup and freeze it. Um, but me javelin on one side, they... I'm going to try this like seamlessly whip one out of the earth then, but that didn't quite work. There you go, little ones like that, as you can see, it's starting to uh, sprout up as well, so it is definitely time. Probably past time really, but it's a nice little crop at this time of year when there's not much that you can harvest, it sort of fills up that uh, hunger gap if you like. There we go. They've just sat there quite nicely all winter. Lovely job. I tend to um, sow a row. What I've done is um, sowed, like really over sowed in every row. So I just dig, dig a small trench, probably yeah, about April time I think I did them. Um, sowed them in quite thickly and then I didn't bother really thinning them out at all. Um, only in clumps when there was about 10 plants came up in the same square inch. Uh, other than that you can see that they're quite densely planted. Um, yeah, and they just seem to do really well in my soil. A yeah, nice sized parsnip. You, you, you can get massive great big parsnips like that but I find them to be quite healthy. You lose half of them and you know they're just not that nice, they're not that sweet or anything so for me that's perfect. As you can see here they're really really tightly packed together but they're all coming up a nice size and they're all coming up as one single parsnip as well with one leg which is lovely. You just got to make sure you don't make the ground rich, don't fertilise them at all, really really abuse them. Just make sure that your ground is nice and loose with no stones. And these guys will just take care of themselves. Look at that. Now if you ever had any hard problems harvesting your parsnips, the answer is to find them, push and then pull and they come out dead easy lot. So by pushing them down you're just loosening them rather than tugging at them and risk damaging them. So, little push, little pull, out they come. Now then, my garlic's been in for a while now in the, in the pots that I put it in. As you can see that's all sprouted up absolutely lovely in the greenhouses and got away. I want to get it outside now because I want to make sure that this gets a nice frost on it, breaks that solid um, bulb up so that you get lots of individual little cloves. Uh, if you plant it out too late it doesn't get that frost, you do just get, like I say, one big lump of garlic, which you can still use but it's not, you know, it's not what you want really, is it? So these guys, these are me uh, reds that I've saved over from last year, uh, I'm going to get these ones out. I want to be uh, planting these, this has all been uh, really well manured on this bed here. I'm also going to do a bit of a scatter and a blood fish and bone as well, which is like a general uh, fertiliser. Really get these guys away to a good start, because they're going to be in for a bit of a shock, going from inside in the nice warm conditions to out here. But uh, they'll be absolutely fine, they're hardy as oak, there's not a lot that will go wrong with them, they don't get a lot of predators. And now they've got their heads up, there's less likelihood of the birds coming along and pointing them out as well, because they see that little thing and they, they whip it out. Um, so I'm going to put these in rows in this bed, about six inch apart. In order to get me six inch, I'm going to use... Oh, piece of wood here and on the piece of wood I'm just going to put little notches with a tape measure and a marker just so I know where I am and I also get a nice straight line as well which is what we want. So as you can see these guys have got away lovely now, nice bit of root coming out of there, don't worry if you snap one or two of them, it's not a big deal they'll forgive you.
and then when you are planting them up again just get the level about the same so the top of the compost where your pot is is about how deep you want to go so I've already planted the garlic clove about a full depth down so you already know you've already got the right depth and there we go that's the first row of garlic in there uh, give them a bit of a water in you might say what's the point the ground's really wet already uh, the watering in doesn't just water them it also settles the soil around the roots and makes sure that there's no like major air pockets or anything under there so it just helps everything you know just get where it needs to be garlic with your garlic um, just leave it in the ground now it's dead hardy it'll just do its thing um, until about June, July, you'll know that it's ready to harvest because it'll go uh, like an onion, it just goes really brown, flops over, so that's when it finishes growing. Garlic, love it. Now then, to any of you growing rhubarb at this time of year, yours might look a little bit little like that, like it's just poking through. Yours might look a little bit more advanced like this, or even bigger still. Now there is one thing that you need to keep an eye out for at this time of year. Now, you see how the rhubarb grows out of these bud shapes here and the leaf unfurls like a brain. Now, on some plants at this type of year, you'll actually find that they try to flower. Now, what will the flower look like? It'll look like that. Now, as you can see, that is not a leaf, that is a flower head. You need to get rid of that off there to give your rhubarb as much chance and strength as possible. So. There you go, he's gone. You do not want your flower heads growing. Maybe you do, maybe you don't want to harvest any rhubarb and you want to see what they look like. But that flower spike will grow, probably four, five, six feet tall. Huge, take all the uh, energy from the plant. So yes, get rid of them bad boys. These are my secateurs anyway, these are my left-handed uh, Kent and Stowe. Left-handed, you say, yeah, it does make a difference because I'm uh, a left handy I can actually see what I'm cutting like that as opposed to if they were the other way around then I would not these ones have just you see how they've got a nut on the back of there they've just come a little bit loose they've got a bit of a wobble I'm not getting a very good trim you see the gap in between so what I'm going to do is give these a good clean up and then also this nut on the back here is going to give that a little tweak because it's just a nylock nut so it will loosen up over the year there's quite a lot of play in that actually, that's why I'm struggling. Obviously if you go too far you'll lock your blades and they won't want to move. So just try and find the right level of tension on there so that the spring will reduce, return it rather, but that you also get good contact between your blades. Look at that, lovely. I'll give these a bit of an oil in and a bit of a clean up. Nice. Well, it's mid-March anyway, I want to get some sewing done. Apart from them few bits in the greenhouse, I've not got many edibles on the way at the minute. So I'm going to start, I'm going to put out some lettuce, uh, a few brassicas, uh, just a few things that will be able to handle the uh, the cool greenhouse at this time of year. So obviously I've not got any heating in there. I've got a few plants back at home. I've not sown my tomatoes yet, although that is on the list for this week. Um, my chilies are all growing quite well. They're about this big. I'll see if I can... Uh, get a little video of them snuck in there somewhere but um, in this tray here I want to do some uh, little uh, cut and come again lettuces so these will be ones that I don't harvest the whole bulb I'll just behold harvesting you know the occasional leaf as and when I want them so these little tray cells here they'll be absolutely fine uh, how many have we got there 4, 8, 12, 16, 24 um, so yeah I'm going to put some uh, Lola Rosso in because um, obviously they don't form a head, they'll just be something that you can pick the leaves off and also I've got one here which uh, is from a magazine, it's just called Salad Bowl Red and Green Mixed which is uh, that one there, if that one will have that now we should just take these, put them oh, in the greenhouse now as with all your seeds, once you've put them in the seeds will float, so um, best thing not to do is grab your watering can and go sloshing in on the top of them. Uh, your seeds will float up, could float off the tray completely, compost is going to go everywhere. So with this method all I'll do is I'll just pour a bit of water into the tray. Here we go. And what will happen is, because there's a hole in the bottom of each pot, each of them cells will be able to soak up enough water. 
and that'll moisten the compost. And then also what I've got here, just a cheap squirty bockle, and then that's going to mist the surface of the soil without causing any major disturbance to the seeds that I've just lovingly planted. I'll also make sure that the top of the compost and the seeds themselves get a good watering. And then that will be pretty much it. There's no need to keep watering these guys and going crazy once you compost wet at this time of year. All you're going to do is just introduce mould, fungus, algae, bacteria that's going to cause them to uh, damp off and rot off. So there we go, that's those absolutely fine now. We'll be leaving those uh, till they germinate and then they'll get thinned out. That's me uh, lettuces. Now there's a broad range of plants that fall under the brassica heading. Obviously you've got your kales at the back, you've got your cabbages, you've got your broccoli, cauliflower, uh, things like sweet turnips, even radishes, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi. They're all brassica plants. Obviously they've all been selectively bred for different reasons and for different results. So you'll have something like a cabbage which has been selectively bred because it forms a head and it's nice and leafy. Uh, you'll have something like the cauliflower and the broccoli which are actually bred for the flowers which is something that you try and prevent in cabbages but obviously it's the flower head that we eat mainly on those. And then you've got other ones which have been bred for the stem if you like. So obviously these guys here the stem fattens up and that's the part that we're after. Same with a turnip or a swede. So here we go then, I've got me, uh, me tray filled up with compost now, I'm just going to dip a little hole in the middle of each one of them where I'm going to put a seed. Now you can put these into just one big tray of seed compost and cover with a fine layer of dirt like it says on the seed packet. Um, I prefer not mess about with pricking out, I like these ones because I can just transplant the entire pod without disturbing the roots too much into a larger pot. Just literally pop all of that out as one block and then I can uh, plant them on. Now you don't want to be using any heat to germinate brassicas, you don't want to be using a propagator or anything like that. These are cool weather plants, they'll germinate really really quickly in a greenhouse um, or anything like that. So if you, if you do grow them indoors what you might find is that they'll grow quite leggy. Now, if you've not heard of that term before what happens is a combination of too much heat and not enough light um, especially the sort of conditions that you'd find you know on a, on a windowsill or something like that at home can cause the seedling to uh, grow really really long really really thin looking for light um, and that uh, creates a really really weak plant so a cold frame or as I'm going to use a greenhouse is absolutely fine yeah and that's probably about it for today I've been down here a few hours done a bit of sowing uh, just had a bit of a look around everything seems all right apart from me squished garlic me. Um, signs of spring are uh, showing up everywhere so as you can see my Summer raspberries are starting to come into uh, leaf now. Just one solitary daffodil there coming up. Looking bright yellow and beautiful. It's the only splash of colour in the garden at the minute actually. So, other than that everything's looking a bit, uh, a bit barren as it does at this time of year. So, any bumblebees waking up around here are not going to be in for too much of a treat. So anyway, have a nice week and I shall see you all soon. Thank you for joining me. Boom!